Yesterday we did something about a very interesting concept. What we learned is homeostasis and we try to understand as to how all compassing it is and any physiological process we can try to understand and interpret in the light of how homeostasis is being organized in our body and how it ensures that the internal environment is kept as constant as possible in spite of the continuous per perturbations that go. Now, uh, we'll move on now. We'll, we'll talk about the, the muscle physiology, okay? Uh, we know that uh, there are... Uh, why do we need muscles? Because uh, we have to interact with the environment and we need to move. See, this is mechanical. See, we have to move in the world, okay? So, the nature has provided this wonderful system which we call as the muscle physiology and let us try to learn something about it. And again, we have done it in the school that we have... Uh, what, what, what? We have three different kinds of muscles. Oh, no, there are special types, okay? Basically, at the heart of everything, there is actin and myosin. Remember, it's actin myosin, okay? And the sliding of the two filaments on one another. But, but when their histological structures are pretty unique to that organ, therefore, I'll call it as a cardiac muscle, I'll call it as a skeletal skeletal, and I'll call it as the smooth muscle. I'll talk about smooth muscle when we go to the digestive system. I'll talk about the cardiac muscle when we talk about the heart eventually, okay? And, uh, and then we have the skeletal muscle about which we are going to focus here and now. So, this, so, the, so we are going to talk about the skeletal muscle. Uh, the, if you look at the skeletal muscle or even cardiac muscle, you find that there are very clear striations on that. Can you see that, that dark, dark, dark and light patches there? Hello, can you see those? Oh, before that, let me see this interesting image. This is just an animation, okay? A little animation makes the things interesting, okay? So, somebody is flexing the muscle, if I can use that phrase, you know? Somebody is flexing the muscle, not a great idea. It's a flexing muscle, okay? So, there is, you'll find that there are muscles are, are inserted there on the pectoral girdle, on the pectoral girdle, and the other end of the muscle is on the radio ulna here, okay? And as the muscle contracts, you pull in the hand, okay? And as you pull, you call, so the pulling up action is called the flexor muscle. So, those on the, so these ones, these ones are the flexor muscles, and when the flexor muscle contracts, at the same time, the other, the muscle on the other side has to relax. Are you with me? And so we'll call this as, and so when this muscle contracts, I can extend my hand. Okay, and this is called as extensor. Now, don't you think that this is so simple and so elementary and so basic? But in 1920, Sherrington got Nobel Prize for this discovery. Are you not stunned? For a very simple discovery that you have a muscle, when this muscle contracts, the other guy has to relax and the other way around. Very simple, very simple. 1920s, Nobel Prize Sherrington. Okay, so that's that's what uh, Sherrington told us about. So let's move on. So this is the motor function. And when we, so you take a tiny piece of muscle, skeletal muscle from anywhere, and uh, you stain it, don't stain it, don't care, just put it under the microscope. And you will find that there is a clear cut, there are clear cut, uh, there are cut fibers, and then you can see the clear cut striations. Dark and light and dark and light and dark and light and therefore the name has come striated muscle. Now this muscle we'll also call as uh, we can also call as voluntary muscle. Why do you call it as voluntary muscle? Because I can move it at my will. Okay, this is in stark contrast. This is in stark contrast with uh, certain muscles of my body, which I don't control. Okay, like this, like the like the like the peristaltic movement of the elementary canal. Okay, like the contraction of the gallbladder so that the bile is released. Okay, you, you, you don't control it. Okay, it happens, it happens within the internal regulatory systems about which we'll talk sometime. But right now we are focused on the skeletal muscle, a thing that you can control or voluntary muscle. Okay, so voluntary muscles are the striated muscles and oh, this is an interesting image, just look at it. So here we have, so, so basically what we learned so far that, that, the, that the skeletal muscle has to be anchored on one bone and the other end has to be on the other bone so that when the contracts you can have the functioning of a joint. Okay, now here we have a, there you have again the muscles of your up, upper arm. Again, you can see the extensor and the flexor there. Are you with me so far? Hello, great. And then I'll take, I'll take a tiny part. So this is, this is the bone on the bone. This muscle is inserted and I have this muscle, muscle bundle going that way. And if I take a transfer section, I find that there are several, I can count one, two, three, four. I can very clearly see some bundles there. Can you see some bundles there? Each bundle I'll call, call as a fascicle. What do I call it as? Fascicle. So there are there are series of fascicles, and if I go, uh, then I'll I'll take a closer look at a fascicle, and from a fascicle I'll go on to a single a single pinkish body. Can you see there are pinkish bodies everywhere? Now I I'll I'll take this and I, this is still a diagrammatic. So find out what real that pinkish tiny body is. I'll take a histological section, transfer section through the muscle, and now I'll stain it and put it under a microscope, and I find that can you see those pinkish bodies, 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 bodies all over? So this is just one fascicle uh, zoomed in here and in each fascicle I can see those pinkish bodies. Each pinkish body is a transfer section of a muscle fiber. 
when i say muscle fiber i mean muscle cell and when i say muscle cell i mean muscle fiber the two words are uh, are used interchangeably is the concept clear muscle cell is same as muscle fiber so what we are going really going, going to con concentrate is the muscle fiber now if you see very carefully around each muscle fiber can you see there is plenty of whitish tissue okay is everywhere everywhere the whitish tissue is everywhere whitish tissue is it's connective tissue okay and connective tissue if this is a this is a muscle cell here the connective tissue makes a make, makes a thin sheet around it makes a thin sheet around it and and a muscle cell is extremely long a muscle cell can be uh, can be several inches few inches can be very small can be very long depending on so actually when we talk about when we talk about these muscles a single muscle cell or muscle fiber which starts here goes all the way all the way Okay, this is not question one muscle fiber talking to no 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 it's one muscle fiber it will go all the from one end to another it will go and as you go from here 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 to here there is something coded here can you see the author has given a pinkish 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 and finally it is going to it is a whitish which is terminating on the which is inserted on the bone hello so what's really happening is that the cell goes cell goes around cell goes the sheet of the connective tissue eventually the cell ends. cell ends so the pinkish part ends and what continues is the whitish whitish connective tissue which is finally inserted on the bone so the muscle fiber never directly inserts on the bone what inserts is that whitish connective tissue i'll not call it as a whitish connective tissue i'll call it as a ligament or a tendon what do you call it as say that loudly ligament, ligament or a tendon what is inserted on a bone is what ligament. ligament so muscle doesn't go there so muscle has to but the muscle is so firmly attached to the ligament okay so when the muscle contracts how it contracts i'll show you shortly when the muscle contracts it will pull the ligament and when it pulls the ligament ligament is ligament is not elastic ligament then when the ligament is stretched the bone is stretched and that's how we are able to accomplish a motor motor function okay we are going to talk about a single cell what have i done now well from the earlier slide i have taken a single cell and i i i put the single cell there and i look i try to look at it through a microscope and lo and behold i am really surprised because i call it a single cell but it has several nuclei not one several nuclei so i start asking a question as to why is this kind of cell having several nuclei then the answer is in development when i go to the development i find that single cell is not not actually a single cell but it is made of a combination of large number of cells and what is each cell called as each cell look at the top there are so during development there are tiny 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 cells each cell is called as myoblast myo refers to muscle blast refers to that it is in early stage of development myoblast okay several myoblasts come together come together the plasma membrane separating them goes away and then you get a syncytium so what i call as a single muscle fiber or a single muscle cell is a syncytium which is formed by the union of a large number of myoblasts and therefore a cell has several nuclei so in real terms is a single cell a single cell no it's formed by the union of a large number of what very good very good then if you very carefully see at the image on the extreme right uh, yeah the left at the top uh, the three four cells are uh, are uh, pinkish there but the one is yellow cell can you see that yellow cell there <coughs> hello the author wants to emphasize on that yellow cell uh, the author calls it as a uh, a satellite cell calls it as what satellite. satellite cell big name small meaning it is a stem cell what is it it's a stem cell it remains undifferentiated it remains undifferentiated but in case of uh, in case of any injury or if you do a lot of exercise then you know what the stem cells does okay it will differentiate it will contribute to the formation of additional 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 uh, myoblasts and then the muscle fibers are you with me so so you please remember that there are there, there are certain stem cells so so if so whenever there is a muscle injury okay our tissue is able to restore or recover because we have stem cells uh, what is the scientific name for this other name i gave you for the set for for the stem cell satellite, satellite cell what is it satellite. great 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 so i i i so i take cell here and then then i i look at the cell and i inside the cell i find very interesting i find tiny tiny units Tiny, tiny. This single cell, okay? I tiny units, and each tiny unit is called as a myofibril. We are within a cell. We are within a cell. What we do? We are talking about a large number of protein fibers, okay? And there are several bundles of such protein fibers, and each bundle I am going to call as what? Myo, because it's muscle. Muscle fibril, because it's a fibril. It's a myo. It's a it's myofibril. All right. 
Now what I'll do is, <coughs> so we are looking at a single cell and uh, this is a 3D image and in the 3D image you can see the, uh, you can see several myofibrils and then there is the cytoplasm, we'll call it sarcoplasm, there's plasma membrane, I'll call it a sarcolima. What am I doing? I'm still looking at a cell, sarcolima is same as plasma membrane, okay, and then inside that there's going to be cytoplasm, I'll call it as the, uh, as the sarcoplasm. Okay, and uh, then um, myofibrils, and then there are, and of course I can see the I can see the striations there. The the if you uh, so and and the beauty here is look, muscle is an amazing organ for a simple reason that there is an amazing geometry, geometry of what geometry of fibrils, the way the fibrils are organized, okay, at a precise point. When I say this precise, this fibril and this fibril, and when I say that these two fibrils are 3 nanometers apart, they better be 3 nanometers apart. Not only here, all along the length, if I have a, dis if I say that it, they have to be that, that geometry is, and that precision in the geometry is the absolute beauty of any skeletal muscle. Have I emphasized my point? Geometry. Why I am using the word geometry repeatedly? I will come to that very shortly. But before that, let us see the, the, the dark bands and the light bands. And uh, a textbook tells us that the dark band we will call as A band, <coughs> A band and I band. Very funny words. Why A and Y? Okay. So, what you do is you take a muscle tissue. Okay. Take a muscle tissue. And so, you will find that there are alternate bands. There is a light band, dark band, light band, dark band, light band. I will, I will, I will impinge light on in this direction, okay? And then the light passes through the dark band, follow my story, when the light passes through the dark band, it shows a certain refractive index, okay? Are you with me so far? Now, I, now I, 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 I send a beam of light in this direction, right angle to the previous one, and I get refractive index and I find that this refractive index is different from the first one. So depending on the direction in which you send a beam of light through the dark band, Refractive index is different. Anisotropic band, A band. In the case of I band, no matter in which direction I, 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 th I, throw, I throw a beam of light, refractive index is same, therefore I band. Hello, so you should know why A band is I band and why. So what is what does I stand for? Please read here. Isotropic, Isotropic and anisotropic depending on the properties. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, look at this image. Okay, this is real biological structure. We are looking at the, um, along the length of the fiber, uh, we have taken extremely thin section, we put it under transmission electron microscope and we can, uh, and I find that, yeah, 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 what I said so far is really there. There is a, there is a dark band and there is a light band, there is a dark band and the light band and I can go from all along the length, all along the length of the muscle from one end to another and I will get alternate light and dark bands. Well, now I probe a little bit, little deeper because I have, looked, I, have, I have an electron microscope in, image in front of me and I find that at the center of the light band, center of the light band, very interesting, there is a very dark line, okay. So actually, actually the light band is not uniformly light, okay. There is a very thin dark band and, and people call it as a, either as Z disc or Z membrane or Z line, three different names mean absolutely thin. What did I say? Z disc, got it? Okay, okay. So, so what is what is this? What is this Z line? It's uh, it's made up of. Uh, I'll tell you a little later. Okay, but right now I'll give you. It is it is extremely rich in a protein called as desmin. What do you call it as? Desmin. It's rich in. I'll I'll talk more about desmin. So this is so this is okay. And then then this is the I band. And <coughs> when I stretch, so I have a long fiber, and I go from one end to another end. I, I little careful uh, observation reveals to me that actually it is repetition of repetition of so if I go from Z disk to Z disk from here to here okay so there is there is a half of the uh, uh, light band then a dark band full and half of the light band again half of the light band full dark so I find that there is a unit and that unit starts from Z membrane it goes to another Z membrane and I'll call this as sarcomere. What do I call it as? So what is my sarcomere? If I walk along the length of a muscle from one end to another end, okay, I come across repetition of units and each unit is a sarcomere and how do I define my unit? Z membrane to Z membrane, Z membrane to Z membrane, Z membrane to Z membrane, are you with me? So, so what is a sarcomere? It is unit along the length and it is bound by Z membrane to Z membrane and it is sarcomere. 
is that is that is that very well taken okay sir hmm. but you can take light band and black band together and call it as a unit Oh, you can. They are also repeating. Absolutely, absolutely, very good, very good. If you just, if you just base your statement on this observation, is absolutely correct. He is saying that why do I take only this as a unit? I can uh, at the at the center of a dark band, I have a line here. I have a line here also. Can you see that line? Okay, I'll give you the name. That line is called an M line. What is it called as? M, -line. M line. It is called as M line because it is at the center of the sarcomere. Are you with me so far? Okay, but he's right. He can say that. Well, I can say this as a unit. So M line to M line, M line to M line, M line. I can take that unit also. And why not? Not because when you look at the whole thing in terms of function, which I will tell you in another five to five ten minutes, you will realize that sarco that that in terms of function, sarcomere works as a unit. Okay, and not M line. Okay, and and the, and these details I'll give, reveal you reveal to you in another half a dozen slides. Okay, so anatomically you can do that, but functionally it makes more sense to make sarcomere as a unit. Oh, uh, well, don't forget uh, there is plenty of uh, sarcoplasm, and in the sarcoplasm you have uh, uh, for uh, for supply of uh, food material there are there are plenty of glycogen granules and flat droplets are there, and of course there are a huge number of mitochondria. You have to have. Okay, you can't without without supply of. Uh, supply of energy you can't have the so this is just to emphasize and 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 there are mitochondria and then there are blood vessels and there are nerves okay i mean they are they are all passing through the through the connective tissue and they'll terminate on the plasma membrane of a of a muscle cell and how it how it functions we'll see a little later